James chapter 2, picking up in James chapter 2, verse number 5. I'm going to read, I'm going to reread verses 1 through 4, and then I'm going to begin my teaching this morning, beginning in verse 5. So if you're there, follow along with me because... It is a it is a, a great um, privilege that we have in this country, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning. To still be able to open the Word of God, Amen. and that's that's something that I come to come to be more and more aware of, and and I'm going to I'm going to talk about that more and more as I continue my life, just continue to be thankful. To have it, to hold it, to read it, and to apply it by the grace of God. Yes, amen. amen. Let's read verse 1, chapter 2. It says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. For if there come unto you assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. And you have respect to him that wears the gay clothing and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, Stand thou there or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then, are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Verse 5, hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he had promised to them that love him? First of all, I want to begin by saying that we have a promise. We have a God given promise. Amen. We have a God-given promise that God, when he is just, I've just shared with you in his word, it, say, it says specifically that he had promised to them that love him. What an awesome statement that is when we take and we really let that come in and take root in us and, and build in us and work in us. One, whatever we profess, first of all, the faith of the Lord Jesus. You know, much of the church, of course, is, is learning and growing in that, the faith of the Lord Jesus. Many of the church have rejected it. They, they're going another way. But that doesn't mean that they can't come back and turn back. And I pray and believe that many will. But to hear and to reject is not a good place to be. Because whenever God gives us light in his word, and we refuse to accept it, and we refuse to believe it, we put ourselves in a bad situation. Because whenever we think we're having trouble with any sin, that whatever it may be, it's, it's only going to get worse if we continue to reject, if we continue to turn a deaf ear. But that's not what I came here to minister on this morning. I just wanted to share that. Because at the same time, when we speak of the goodness of God, we must behold his severity as well. We must understand that he is a God of judgment. And he passes judgment upon his church. That it must first begin at the house of God. And that we, we hear whenever God's word is proclaimed that the truth is, that is in when we operate in the faith of our Lord Jesus. 
He says, Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. In essence, what that is saying is if we are operating in an attitude of having respect to persons, we're not operating in the faith of the Lord Jesus. That's right. We're operating in some other type of faith. We're operating in some other gospel. We are now serving a, another Jesus, one that someone has made up for us, some, something that someone had an idea that someone has promoted and then we have looked to. So to say that we have the faith of the Lord Jesus, but we operate in respect to persons, it makes us a deceitful hearer of the word. That we hear the word, but we don't do the word. And we deceive ourselves. And James, the whole book, and we've already covered in chapter one, James deals a lot with that. And I think that's a lot of why much of the church chooses not to spend much time in James. Because it does deal with with us right where we're at. It deals with our everyday life and living, the people that, of how that we treat our brother, our sister. And it's something that when it comes down to, when it really comes down to when a person really wants a change in their life. Because being a Christian is about change it's about change whenever a a believing sinner comes to Christ there is an initial change that happens but it doesn't mean God's through with it doesn't mean that he has changed you and now you're done and now that you're going to just be here and you know, you're just going to, you know, hang around until he decides to call you home. That's not the intention. God steadily is changing us and bringing us from glory to glory as we continue to look and as we continue to believe, as we continue to press toward the prize for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God is steadily bringing that change that I need in my life. Now, we may look at someone and say, boy, I wish that person would change. <laughs> I know just what that person needs. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's only one that knows that. And that's, that's who we need to commend that person to. Give them to the Lord. Bathe them with prayer unto the Lord. And I pray God helps me do that more and more because I, I'm beginning to be more of a believer in prayer. I see it. Because if we're not praying, we, we don't believe it. We don't believe it works. We don't believe there's a need for it. We believe that maybe it's just a waste of time. So if we believe something, that means we're going to engage ourselves into it. So that's why I said that I'm, I'm becoming more of a believer in prayer. You lost your mic. Cool. <laughs> you got so excited you lost your mic. <laughs> I stepped on a cord, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, but that's a good thing because... <coughs> Whenever we remain in a position of God wanting to make us into what he wants us to be, and that grace begins to come in and flow into us and through us, it's, I've seen things when it's almost like it's a little bit scary at times 
to say, Lord, is this real? Is this really happening? Is, is, is how I handle this situation, that's not just me, is it? No, he says, that's, I'm working through you. So it, it, it's, it's like, and, and I've experienced this, I'm just being honest, I almost want to pinch myself at times to make sure I'm not dreaming, to make sure that this is real, to make sure that whenever God's peace overflows and comes in and, and, and just covers a situation that it's not just that I'm not concerned about it, but it's just that I'm trusting. I'm trusting in Him. I'm trusting more in Him and, and what He's promised. I mean, trusting in His Word through all that He's brought us through and bringing us into. True faith is a faith that works. If what we profess is not working for us, then it's, it's not true. It's not a true faith. It has to work in the one that is professing. And, it, and it's, it's for it to, to have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, are, we, we understand and God brings us along. It's the Holy Spirit by the way, earlier when I said that we commend those to the one that does know that person and knows what they need, we put them before the Lord and we, and we, we trust and believe that the same Holy Spirit that is working in us and changing us is able to change that person that we're in prayer about. That we don't look at that person in a condemning way, in a judgmental way, but we look at them to extend the love of Jesus, to be there for that person, to love that person, but to pray for that person and believe that God is a God that answers prayer and that he will work. He will hear us when we pray. Now, there's a lot that goes into that when it comes to getting what we're praying for. But our duty is to pray and just trust and leave it in the hands of God. And that is enough. That's it. We can have peace in that. That's it. We can have rest in that. <laughs> we can lay our head down at night and it not be, you know, tumbling around and can't sleep because of whatever. But we can rest in that. And that's, you know, I don't know what's ahead for any of us, for myself included. The things that we may have to deal with or face in this life. But the sooner we can make a decision and we can learn to trust and believe that God is enough, yes, that's right. the happier your life's going to be, the happier my life's going to be. And I can have that. I can rest in that because Jesus provided it for me. And that's what I want. Yeah. If someone calls me indifferent, if someone says that I'm to this or to that, that's okay. Because my mind is made up. And that's what I'm going to live. That's what I'm going to walk. And that's, that's what I'm going to enjoy the benefit that comes through that knowledge of having that operating knowledge of everything that Jesus paid for when he said it is finished. He gave his life's blood on the cross for the believer. We have to believe it. We have to look. We have to, as the three B's say, believe, behold, become. Believe it, behold, and become. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit that takes over and brings us to this place. So, if, if you're still in a place, and I think we all can raise our hands to this at some time, maybe some of us are farther along than others, where a respect a person attitude would want to try to come on us sometime. Just, just keep believing, keep trusting, and know that the same God, the same grace that flows from the same God is able 
to take that person as well and bring them up in the kingdom of God. Yes, ma'am. You know, uh, when I was going through this whole mess of trying to fix everybody, because <laughs> if you're trying to fix one person, you're going to try to fix most all people. And uh, the Lord uh, showed me how wrong I was. And the scripture that he gave me, the reason I want to share this, because the scripture that he gave me to stand on was in Psalm 138, verse 8. And he told me that if I will die to everything, give people, quit fixing people, quit messing with all that, that he said, I will perfect the things which concern you. Amen. And when I give them up and turn them over to God, really, and quit trying to fix them or judge them or anything, turn them loose, God has promised that he will perfect the things which concern me. And the people in my life are the ones who concern me the most. Right. So God will then begin to do what he's going to do on the other end. But as long as I'm trying to do the other end, God's hands are tied. Amen. Thank you. And I, I believe something, too, and I, you may have said it, and I just might have missed it, that once we get to that place, then, you know, if, if, if we're still really trying to fix up somebody else's problem, he, he can't even fix us. Then we're free. <laughs> then we're free, trust me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Perfect. Um, perfect input there this morning. <clears throat> No, I, I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but in Galatians chapter 6, 1 and 4, the scripture tells us that everything that Jesus done for us was in order to deliver us from this present evil world. Think about that just for a minute. That's not just, that's not just talking about from the day that we came and we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we and we're truly born again, and now we're 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 walking in the light of His Word, and that we're supposed to now just you know be like we used to be until Jesus comes or calls us home. I've, I've kind of already talked a little bit about that point, but what He's meaning is that's to be delivered from this present world is not. When we leave this world, which we will, thank God that we will, but it is talking about today being delivered from this, this, this present evil world, this, this mindset of the world, everything of how that the world operates and functions is totally against God. It's totally against the kingdom of God, the principles given to us. And one principle I want to bring out is in Matthew. And I believe it's the very first, the very beginning of the Lord's uh, sermon, if you will, when he, the Sermon on the Mount, when he gave the Beatitudes, that's if I'm saying that correctly. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Very first thing that he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Hath not God chosen, he says, the poor of this world rich in faith? Has he not chosen and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. It's not saying here that just because you're poor that you have great faith. You can't say that, okay, well, I, I come from a wealthy family. That doesn't, does that mean that I can't know God? Of course not. But it's in what we put our trust and our hope in. It's, it's generally easier for people who have come from a hard upbringing, from maybe a life of, of ha having very meager means, not that one's any better than the other, because everything in this life is just temporal. 
It's temporary. Think about, we need to keep reminding ourselves of that. It's just temporary. The cars that we drive, they're just temporary. The tractors that we use are just temporary. The tools that we may have in this life is just temporary. The things that we take and we build with those tools are just temporary. The passions that we may have in this life to, to, to work and to do and to accomplish things, that's all temporary. Our occupation, our career is temporary. You know, I was, I, I'm not saying this in pride. I think it's a wonderful blessing of God to be able to do this, to be able to build your own home. God enabled us to do that over many years. It took many years, didn't it, Lord? <laughs> we were able to do that. And it was, well, we had, had to borrow money against part of it, but during that time, everything we done, we done as we could pay for it. And the blessing that came from that is we didn't have to pay a house note for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Now, it's not the fanciest house on the block, but that's okay. But it's what God gave to us. And you know what? Every day I, I'm to be reminded, and I have to know this, that you know what? One day somebody else is probably going to live in this house. Should the Lord tarry? You know, but I'm okay with that. Perfectly okay with that. That's okay. And God may choose, may tell me to leave that house and go somewhere else. I'm okay with that. Because I know if he tells me to do it, he'll provide what I need. That's right. So I'm not, I don't want to hold on to a past blessing. I'm going to enjoy it as long as he says enjoy it. I'm going to reap from that as long as he says this is what I have for you at this time. But I'm saying all this to, to reinstate the fact that everything is temporary for just a little while. Short. Just a short while. Things that we have. And, and we're and so we're so blessed in this country that we we fall into the trap many times of putting our whole life, our whole confidence of who we are, our whole assurance, our whole happiness, and something that we have. It's very dangerous. And you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something I got in my pocket. Can y'all see that? Yep, it's an army soldier. It's one of our green army soldiers. You know who gave that to me? Pastor. Pastor Allen gave it to me. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. He, he said we could have one if we wanted. But you remember why? Remember you remember why? Not that we we're trying to set up some kind of graven image. You know, but it's just a little reminder to pray. Right. To pray for our men and women that's in service. Right. And I was reminded of this little this little fellow this morning. <laughs> to say this. You know, on June 6, 1944, the sea ran red with blood on those beaches in Normandy. That's right. That's right. And we're free today. Hallelujah. And that's one of the reasons. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Yeah, you're right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention that pretty regularly because I believe it. Amen. That's right. I believe it. Right. And I'm going to fly my flag because I believe it. Amen. You know, we... Many of us probably have served a, and, you know, and, and that's okay. I, I didn't really know where this message was going this morning, but I just want the Holy Spirit to have his way here. Amen. Amen. That's right. We, uh, 
Some of us have been in the service, not myself, but some that are here. Either that or our family has been in the service. May have even lost someone in, in, in that service, defending the rights and the freedoms that we have in this country. And, you know, we just celebrated that last weekend as we set up aside time to reflect on that during, you know, Memorial Day. It wasn't just a day to, you know, cook out or cook hamburgers and hot dogs or whatever you decided to cook and have a good time in the backyard and relax and kick back and all that's good. There's a reason we do that. There's a reason. So I, I say all that in light of this. When, when we have, when we look at verse 5 again, and we see that hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, he's chosen those who are rich in faith. But there's a reason why we can have this richness. And it's because Jesus thought it for us. He bought us this untold wealth. He paid that price for us. It's, it is something that is free to everyone that will believe, but it'll cost you your life. It'll cost you your life. It doesn't mean that you're going to cease to exist in your body on this earth at the moment you believe, but get ready for it because that's really kind of what he's got in mind. That it's, it's, it's no longer my will that's at front and center, but it's his will to be worked in through me and to change me. And here James is talking about this, how that something as as common as having the love of Jesus Christ in our heart and life. How can we say, John says this, that we love God that we have not seen, but we hate our brother that we have seen? Now, I'm just, I'm just talking to you this morning. I, I'm just saying that, you know, the love of God is so, is so magnificent. God chose us. We didn't choose. We, we sometimes get the idea, oh, well, I, I made the decision. That's something I done. I done it. You ain't done nothing. God knows. Okay, we have to make a, our will has to be in what we're saying, what we're doing. I know, I get that. But I'm going to make a point this morning. God chooses those that are rich in faith. No matter your walk in life, no matter your, the lot of life that you may have, and he paid that price that we can have the richness of his faith. And we're to walk in it. We're to live in it. I got some things wrote down here that I don't know if I really want to talk about this morning or not. But you know what? I ain't the boss. Um, I, I, I want to finish reading this in James before I move, because I'm running out of time. We, verse 6, it says, But you have despised the poor. Do not the rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that Worthy name by which you're called. It's all about the name, church. You know, Wednesday night. Neither is there any other name given to us from under heaven, among men, under heaven, thereby we must be saved. That worthy name. And who are we to, to say one is should be treated better than the other? Amen. That's right. When all of us spiritually bankrupt, 
when we come to God and we receive him, we receive his love, we receive his life. And then now we are to let that change and, and build and work in us. Because it's so easy to get the, you know, even as, even, even today, I believe in my heart, every person here, you know, they're, you're where you need to be with God. You're saved. You're a child of God. If you have put your faith there, you believe, you trust him, you give him your heart and your life. If you've done that, you're a child of God. We can't, we can't continue with this mindset of the world. This and, and, and be productive in the kingdom of God. We are to be fruit bearers, not fruit producers. What are you saying? I'm saying that the fruit that we bear to the glory of God the Father is produced by the Holy Spirit of God Amen. working in us, changing us into what He wants us to be. Amen. That's 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 what we are. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. There's no life in the branch unless it is connected to the vine. And so much that the, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, he said. So we're fruit bearers is when we are connected to the vine. And the, the sap, the life that flows through the vine comes in through the branches. And fruit begins to grow. Fruit begins to be produced. Oh, that's the way God intends it. That's the way God intends it. And I'm going to tell you what, brothers and sisters, we need to let the love of God flow more. I'm speaking for myself. More and more and more. Because everything that's in this world is trying to get it to stop. That's right. It's trying to get the love of God to stop flowing. That's right. And we need to exemplify it. We need to let it go. We need to just keep saying, God, here I am, your branch. And I'm going to stay hooked into the vine. And Lord, you produce in me what you won't produce. Just, just let it go. Let it happen. Because God the Father is to be glorified, church. Yes, he is. Everything that has been done through the Son brings glory unto the Father. And when we look to Jesus Christ exclusively, and we look to him for our life, for our living, for our salvation, for our sanctification, for our deliverance from this present evil world, then God the Father is glorified because fruit is produced yes. unto holiness. Yes. Holiness. And I didn't really want to talk about that this morning. <laughs> holiness. But it's a good thing, church. It's a good thing to understand that we serve a holy God. Amen. We serve a holy God. And God's called us to be a People of holiness. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's, that, I mean, there is tons of scripture. I'm going to try to go to a couple of them here in just a minute. But there is so much to talk about when it comes to God's people living a holy life before Him. And I know we can look back and somebody comes to our mind and we think, oh, well, this person or that person, they, they, they always thought they were so much better than everybody else. Holy, holy, holy. But you know what? May not be exactly who we need to be comparing ourselves to. Let's compare ourselves to the Lord. Let's look to Him. Let's look at the example that He left us. You know, whenever the um, and and John, I think it's John chapter thirteen. Whenever Jesus took the towel. And he took the, the basin of water. 
And he began to wash the feet of his disciples. Peter spoke up, didn't he? He said, Lord, you never wash my feet. He said, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, if you don't let me wash you, you ain't got no part of me. I'm just talking. I'm just paraphrasing this. Y'all need to go read it. He said, Lord, wash my hands and my feet. So if, that's, if it's that serious, I want, I want my hands and my feet washed. Well, that's a good attitude that he had. But Jesus responded and said, You need not to be washed if you're clean already. Save your feet. So what he was telling him, that your feet still need washing. Even though you washed, even though you were being church, we live in a dirty world. And our feet need washing. Our walk needs washing. Our steps need to be washed, cleansed. You know, we, we look at our shoes sometimes, and mine ain't too shiny this morning, but I usually don't worry too much about shining. I keep a layer of dust knocked off of them, that's about it. But you can tell when you go somewhere, a lot of where you've been. Because you look at your shoes. How many guys had mud on your shoes lately? Ooh, I've had a bunch of them. I mean, it's, I'm tired of the mud. That's okay. You can tell where a person's been. You, well, let me just say it this way. Look at your own shoes. And you can tell where you've been because of what's on your shoes. Well, I could, well, I mean, I could have some fun with this one. Y'all got pets? <laughs> The neighbors got pets. You know, any of you ever had chickens? <laughs> you don't wear your best pair of shoes to the chicken yard to gather eggs, do you? You just don't do it. That just ain't a good idea. You got a separate pair of shoes for that. But I, 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 the point that I want to make is that Jesus is still in the foot washing business. He's still wanting to clean us up, church. He's still wanting to clean up our walk. You know, just, just let, him, let him do it. I, I mean, I hope I didn't mess that up too bad, but I, I really believe that's what he was telling Peter. To Peter, your feet needs washing. They're dirty. That's right. You got dirt on your feet. Church, our, our feet still get dirty. Let this, let Jesus keep washing it. Just, just keep letting the. I ain't, I'm not. I'm not. Please understand. I'm not talking about sin and the felon, sin and the felon, and then repent. I'm not just talking about that. Okay. I'm just talking about the world we live in. We need to let the washing of the water of the Word yes. come through us and keep us, yes. keep us single-minded, single-eyed, single-hearted to know and believe that this is all about the work that I'm going to do for Him. This world is not my home. Right, amen. I'm a just passing through. Amen. My treasures are laid up. I may have a little bit down here, but my treasures are laid up. Ooh, yes. Out there in heaven beyond the blue. I don't like saying just somewhere beyond the blue, because I know where they at. <laughs> I just ain't been there yet. The angels beckoned me from heaven's open door. So I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Right. This is this is world is not our home, church. Right. Very quickly, I'm, I'm not going to get to I'm not going to get to do this justice that I wanted in some areas, but I want to look at the parable of the sower very quickly because this it is something that just keeps coming back to me. So we're going to talk about it. But I'm going to look at the book of Mark, chapter four. Matthew is usually where we go a lot of times with the parable of the sower. But look real quick in chapter 4. I'm going to begin in verse 13. He said, Know ye not this parable, how that then will ye know all parables? The sower went, the sower sowed the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word. That was sown in their hearts. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, 
who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterward. When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And verse 19 is where I, I want to focus real quick. He says, and the cares of this world, okay, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. That's what I want to stop. I want you to focus on that part. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. It 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 cuts the supply, the, the, the life supply off of the word. It, whenever you choke something, what are you trying to do? You're trying to trying to cut it off, trying to kill it. When you choke it. But Jesus said this is what it does. When the cares of this, this, this life, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's the point that Brother Roger brought out. You know, we're, I understand we're in this world and we've got things to do. We have to, when we go to work, we have to focus on what we're doing. First of all, for safety, you, you, you can't be on a machine or doing something and your mind be just somewhere else because first of all, you're not gonna be productive and you're not going to be safe. So you have to, you have to put that, you have to put that, but that's not where your attention is. That's not where your focus is. That's not where your, your life source is. Yes, you have that job, but it's not your source. You work that job because that's what you're called to do. You're called to work with your hands. If any man work, he shouldn't eat. I mean, that's, that's, that's not the way of the world, though. That's God's way. So it's important that we work, that we do, do those things. But the point that he made is that exactly. We, we keep our attention, our, that our, our primary goal is in Christ yeah, that's right. and pleasing him. That'll make us a good worker. That'll make us a person that the boss will take notice of, perhaps. Not to, because you're trying to show uh, respect to persons and treat them a little bit better or her a little bit better. You just do your job. There, there's such a, a problem today in America of people coming to work, but they just don't want to do their job. Brother Larry, you ain't ever come across nothing like that, have you? <laughs> All the time, is it? But when we want to please God, and we're doing it for Him, and we're doing it for His glory, okay, I gotta work, I gotta feed my family, I gotta have money, they know this, whatever, but this ain't my source. This ain't my provision. The Lord is. So we work as unto the Lord. We we show up on time as unto the Lord. We don't goof off because we're working as unto the Lord. I'm, I mean, I'm preaching to myself too now. This is this is something you've always got to be on guard about. The Bible says that we are to deny ungodliness. Who the world is full of ungodliness, but the child of God has got to, to, to deny it. We've got to deny ungodliness. And there's another part to that. I can't think of it. Some of you probably know it. And worldly lust. I 
I probably got that wrote down somewhere but anyway. Because it did come to my mind anyway. To deny it, to reject it, to don't go there. I mean, these things that come in, we have to be careful, we have to be on guard, not let it become our focus. So I run out of time and thank y'all so much for being here and for your attention this morning. God bless you. And we're going to have a good rest of the day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God.